And we want so much to win people to Christ that we'll do everything we can to hide from them the reality of the wrath of God. Who is for you and me? Jesus! Who will save you from your sins? Jesus! Who loves the African? Jesus! Who loves the white man? Jesus! Who loves the white Jesus! Who loves the African? Jesus! Who loves every man? Jesus! Jesus! I think there are few things more dangerous than preachers out there preaching that God loves everybody unconditionally. Who loves every man? Jesus! I think there are few things more dangerous than preachers out there preaching that God loves everybody unconditionally. Because the message that is heard by the people who hear that is, there are no conditions. I can continue to live just as I'm living in full rebellion against God. And I have nothing to worry about because there aren't any conditions that I have to meet. God loves me unconditionally. I don't have to repent. I don't have to come to Jesus. I don't have to leave my life of sin. Uh, no conditions, no strings attached. God loves me just the way I am. He's glad that I turned out so nicely, and <laughs> so on. But there is a sense, I've written a book on the love of God, where I talk about the three ways in which theologians speak about the love of God. God's love of benevolence, where God has a good will towards everybody, believers and non-believers. Beneficent love of God. God gives benefits to people, whether they're believers or not believers. The rain falls on the just as well as on the unjust. But the most important consideration is the love of complacency, not the love of smugness. But what is meant by the love of complacency is the filial love that God has for the redeemed. And that love is directed first to Christ and then to all who are in Christ, our elder brother. And that salvific love is not something that God has for everybody unconditionally. And sometimes we close our eyes to what the Bible says frequently about God's posture towards the impenitent. God, the Bible tells us, abhors the wicked. That's strong language. God abhors, detests the wicked who are impenitent. And then people say, well, God loves the sinner. He just hates the sin. But he doesn't send the sin to hell. He sends the sinner there. And so this is very dangerous stuff when we tell people God loves you unconditionally. We have to do it from a biblical perspective rather than trying to change the biblical character of God. God is angry every day against the wicked, and justly so. And his every impenitent sinner is exposed every second to the rage, the fury of God's wrath, as Paul tells us in Romans 1.18. And we want so much to win people to Christ that we'll do everything we can to hide from them the reality of the wrath of God. How does God feel about our sin? How does God respond to our sin? The Bible says repeatedly that God is angry because of sin, that though he loves us, God hates sin. And it says on multiple occasions that he also hates those who are sinners. 
This works itself out with the wrath of God. Some of you say, don't go there. Oh yes, we must because the Bible does. And in speaking of the wrath of God, some of you will say, God's not a God of wrath. God's a God of love. God doesn't get angry. God's a God of love. If you take all of the times and ways that the Bible speaks of the love of God and then compile them and take all of the ways that the Bible speaks of the wrath of God and compile them, the number of times that it speaks of his wrath is greater than the number of times that it speaks of his love. He is both loving and filled with wrath. No one is supposed to talk about this anymore. In fact, in a church of our size, this is suicide. We have thousands of people. We have a huge staff. It takes a lot of overhead and money to run a church of this size. And the pressure is, once it gets to this level of expectation to pull back. Don't talk about sin. Don't talk about hell. Don't talk about wrath. Don't talk about blood. Don't talk about the cross. Make a little list of things that people don't like and conveniently ignore them. Some will even say that marketing should be done to where we pull all of you, see what you like and don't like, and I talk about what you like and not what you don't like because you're all the customers. The customer's always right. The customer pays the bills. In the Old Testament, they described it not as marketing, but my prophets prophesy lies and my people like it that way. Let me say this. As I get into the doctrine of propitiation, you need to know that God is very angry at sinners and their sin and that his wrath burns against them. And I tell you that not to be mean, but I tell you that to be truthful. And I will continue to tell you that because when it comes down to it, whether we grow or don't grow or make budget or don't make budget, at the end of the day, to be honest with you, I don't really give a damn. It, it takes the terror out of it. Uh, knowing the terror of the Lord, Paul says, we persuade men. Uh, it's a fearful thing, a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Um, the, that, that is, preaching that God loves you unconditionally is the wrong message. The sinner needs to be terrified about his condition.